You want what? Hello and welcome to the library. My name is Sared and I am your host and narrator. I have a little baby Yui looking at me here. Um, I don't know what he wants. He has yet to tell me. You're beautiful though. <laughs> he's beautiful and he's a good boy. He, he, I may have to stop this and however long it takes him to realize he doesn't want to be here and wants to be out downstairs. But I also think if you're a pet owner of any kind, even fishes, if you're a pet owner, your pets know when you're going away. Like they know. I, I'm not sure if it's a mind reading thing or just you putting your excited energy out there, but your pets know when you're about to leave them. <laughs> like to go away. And I don't just mean for work, I mean like for a weekend. I have my Anime North first convention pre, uh, be, since COVID um, is coming up next weekend. And I am freaking hyped. I'm so excited. Um, and so like everything is in my mind is convention related. And I've got my uh, what I want to do on the guidebook all sorted out and a schedule and all of that. It's all ready to go. Um, but then I'm like, okay, well, I've got to start packing soon. And I don't know how he's going to do with me pulling out and pack. Oh, that's wrong. i got to change the, uh, as to what we're reading today. I just realized that that's not right. Um, you can hear him. That's him. What? Yeah, I'm talking about you. Hi, oh, baby. Hi. Oh, what? I have cuddled with you the entire time. You're such a good boy. Babies. Okay, so. Let me just change this. How do I change this again? Oh, yeah, I moved over on here, I think. Let me just pull this up. Uh, so, yeah, so I am super pumped and excited about my convention and getting going. Uh, however... This will be my first time ever leaving him like overnight. Going to work is fine, but one sec, today we are reading the wife is first. So let me just see if I can get the capitals in there. The wife is first. Reading the wife is first. Perfect. Update all. I'm not sure if that updates on the Twitch, though. The Twitch. Oh, it does. Okay. Okay. It just didn't up update it in my chat. So let me just see if I can fix this here. I just, I am here. I'm just going to fix this real quick. Uh,. Actually, we're reading, and capitalize the title, The Wife is First. And smiley face. Okay. There. Because, yeah, clearly that needed to be done. Um, bum, ba-dum, bum, bum. Oh, geez, it actually showed up. That's funny. Uh, but, um, Okay. So yeah, I think that's good to go, and we're actually ready to go this time. I'm trying to figure out how to best work with my, um, with my OBS and the Stream Deck and the Beacon and all of that. Well, actually, my Stream Deck is fine. Stream Deck works perfectly. She's good to go. No worries. But it's my Beacon and the integration with the... OBS that I'm once again having issues with. It was fixed for like a month. Um, and now it no longer is. So, moving right along. Over to story time. Right, so. Head itchy. Ugh. Today we will be continuing on with chapter 9 of The Wife is First. Um, if you've been following along with um, Married Thrice to Salted Fish... Uh, just to let you know, we've, as of last night, we caught up to, what was that, chapter 62, I want to say? Um, 
and so but it's updated I think it's updated to 65 the last time I checked so 63 64 65 66 um, so I want to do three chapters per stream otherwise one chapter is gonna be very very short so when I want to do as I want to do four chapters per stream I'm going to wait until married thrice updates with enough chapters for a full episode <laughs> sorry sorry I don't know why my avatar is doing the blinkies like that because I have her set up to not do that she should not actually be able to wink so anyways bum, 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 bum. and for some reason my baby's not taking my, his eyes off me <laughs> he's very focused okay um oh yes okay I was trying, I'm, I was going like, even I don't remember where we are on the way this first. So because we're going to be waiting for Mary Thrice to the Salted Fish to update, we will be continuing on with the wife is first, um, which is great because it's almost fully done. And uh, who knows, we may go on to another um, Don May before that happens. Hello, Supernatural Writer. Hello, thank you so much for joining me. Yes, we met last night on, um, on, what is it? The Dunwich Sandwiches stream? I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I believe that's where I know you from. Thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. Um, we are just getting into this story of, it's entitled The Wife is First, and it is a, uh, male gay romance um hilariousness <laughs> it's very funny the whole premise is that uh the main one of the main characters of the two was an asshole in his first life and he transmigrated back into or he time traveled back to before it all went to crap and he realized that his husband who is beside him all along was really his only ally so now he's back and he's infatuated with his husband and it's ridiculous because his husband is going i don't know you <laughs> oh atkinson recommended it oh that's wonderful i really do have to be better i'm i'm so bad at catching other people's streams do you stream as well i ask and yet i can check <laughs> i am new still bam I'll do that there lovely you do the writing oh huh do you do writing on here like on here that would be very cool let me just let me just let me just cyber stalk you one second <laughs> Oh, no, that's not, that's not, that's not, okay, I got it, I got it, oh, no, mute, 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 not you, baby, shush, okay, ah, very cool, ooh, lovely, that's awesome, alrighty, well, if you're, you're here at a really good time, because this is at the very beginning, <laughs> Okay, so I am going to continue on, starting with chapter nine. Um, in this, um, okay, just in terms, uh, the Chinese in this call them, I don't even know book readers, we're on Twitch. There's very few of us, <laughs> very few of us, but we're a tight knit group. <laughs> so um, in this, the, uh, the Chinese term is gong for top and show for bottom so in this the uh gong and show are going back to the shows the wife's essentially home or original family to do the gifts in that after right after the wedding so that's what we're going on 
and I hope you enjoy and thank you so much for for signing in. This is super cool. I get very excited because I very rarely start with anyone in my streams. Okay. And marker. Chapter 9. Thank you. Just let me kiss it. I I feel like I need a <laughs> I feel like I'm going to need a blush through the entire chapter. Oh god. Hearing his call of mother, the tears that concubine Chu had just repressed rushed forth again. It's because mom is useless. If I was not a concubine, then you would not have had to suffer so many wrongs. Over these years, she had had to see her own son pay respects and call others young master. And even if her child wanted to call her mother, he'd have to do so making sure that others were not aware first. The pain she felt was one others wouldn't be able to understand. Concubine Chu was originally the daughter of the first wife of an influential merchant family in Jingnan. The Chu family married her to the North Marquis in order to expand their power over the business by borrowing the power of the North Marquis. Originally, she relied on the favor of the North Marchioness. She had earned, she had earned with her own ability of calculating accounts. Hence, she could pass the days peacefully in the mansion. She meticulously served the Marchioness, only asking that her son would be able to live well. But nowadays, the child whom she loved dearly had been forced down from the qualifications for the imperial exam and was married to a ruthless Wang Yi. How did he still call her gently? How did he not complain? Because he is treated like a spoiled pet. <laughs> Seeing his own previously bold and cheerful mother become like this, Mu Han Jiang's heart felt it extremely hard to take. So he took his mother, who had lost a lot of weight, into his arms. Perhaps marrying Wang Yi is a good thing. Being able to enter the imperial court as a scholar might not necessarily mean everything will be peaceful and life will be smooth. Mother must cheer up. Otherwise, I will worry. On the return trip, Mu Han Zheng was silent. Hiding in his sleeves, his hand grasped the palm-sized pur palm purse that was filled with banknotes worth 100,000 silver given to him by concubine Chu. These are the dividends given every year by the Chu family. I have saved most of it. It is useless in this household. All of it was saved for you. The depths of the royal family of the royal family are deep, and even if that person is pampering you for now, he cannot love you dearly forever. This will also let me be a little more relieved. Jun Qing? Jing Xiao, who was treated coldly, opened his pair of drunken eyes to eyes wide to look at him. Did you hear what I said? Huh? Mu Han Zheng turned his head and, in the beautiful pupils of his eyes, was a trace of bewilderment. Then, in an instant, he recovered his mind. This servant failed in his etiquette. Wang Yi, please forgive me my crime. Jing Xiao sighed. Nothing. I will sleep for a while. Just then, he had said that he did not agree with the North Marchioness's request for assault trade certifications. Instead, he showed him an alternate route, saying this a second time made it boring, seeming like one was showing off one's accomplishments purposefully, so he closed his eyes and did not say more. Watching him sullenly lean against the corner to sleep, Mu Hanjang felt a little apologetic. So he reached out and lightly pushed and lightly pushed at the back of Jing Xiao. Wang Yi, lean on this one to sleep. There is no pillow in the carriage. The carriage ride is very bumpy. If he slept like that, it was very easy to knock against his head. A sec.
The person who was pushed did not respond, and his back was still turned away from him. Was he really angry? Mu Hanjiang moved closer. Don't trust it. Don't trust it. <laughs> Wang Yi? No response. He moved a little closer again. You silly goose. Suddenly, the carriage rolled over a rock and jolted a bit. Mu Hanjiang, because he was kneeling in the carriage and was not balanced, fell backwards. Who knew the person who was currently sulking would unexpectedly instantly turn around and press him into the floor of the carriage while one big hand was cushioning at the back of his head? Mu Hanjiang was shocked by this series of unexpected events, so he stared blankly at a loss on what to do. This servant deserves death. Wang Yi, please forgive this servant's crimes. The driver repeated apolo in, in apologized in a panic. It's fine, Jing Xiao said. But he did not get up immediately. On the contrary, his body softened and he rested his head on the other's chest. Wang, Wang Yi... It was only then that he realized what an ambitious person the two of them were in. Whoa, what an ambiguous position the two of them were in. Mu Han Jiang's face immediately reddened, and he reached out his hands to push away the big fluffy head that rested on his chest. Not allowed to call me Wang Yi in private, Jing Xiao said with dissatisfaction. You see, what is the difference between what you just said and what the coachman said? Etiquette cannot be discarded, Mu Hanjiang said helplessly. I don't care. Jing Xiao was most likely a little drunk, and seeming like a willful child, he got up and said, Call me Xiao. Absolutely, feel free to lurk. <laughs> Hi, baby. You're okay. Wang Yi. Call me Xiao. Jing Xiao raised his upper body and stared straight at the person under him. His bright eyes were full of childlike expectation. Even if that person is... Oh. Even if that person is pampering you for now, he cannot love you dearly forever. The feelings of this person were actually as pure as a child's. But, even if it was like that of a child liking a toy for a while... At the very least, for just a moment, Mu Han Jiang felt that Jing Xiao did like him. Xiao. Upon hearing this, Jing Xiao was satisfied. Clinging to the person in his arms, he narrowed his eyes to rest for a bit. Today's incident reminded him that he should quickly withdraw from the salt certification business as soon as possible. Or, at least... First talk circles around it before sweeping it beneath the table. Thinking like this, he couldn't help but hold the person in his arms tightly. Sure enough, only by firmly grasping this person could his heart feel secure. Once they returned to the prince's residence, Jing Xiao immediately climbed down onto the bed and slept. Visiting the bride's parents as a son-in-law, although, because of his status, they did not force him to drink too much. But the Mu family had many family elders and younger brothers. Drinking one round, he almost couldn't endure it all. Sorry, I'm petting a, a puppy's ears at the moment. It takes priority. I can't roll the page. Give me a second. There you go. Other arm. Okay. Yui's getting head scratches while I read. This is the ultimate multitasking. <laughs> the servant Yin Ju pays respects to Wang Fei. A 13 year old boy knelt in front of Mu Han Jiang to perform his salutations. Do Fu stood on one side beaming and said that this little manservant and two imperial guards he had chosen for him. As he said this, the two men in, imper in the Imperial Bodyguard uniforms also followed to pay respects. No, oh, sorry, wait. Okay. 
I'm literally moving the microphone so that I can t continue to give him a back scratch while I read. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm not stopping. This is my guilt for being away from him for the first time ever in a few days. Uh, Yun Ju is the nephew of the book of the housekeeper from the outer courtyard, Mr. Yun. I don't know who Mr. Yun is. That's weird. Orig oh, Mr. Yun is the book housekeeper. Got you. Originally, he is ordinarily he is quite clever. Wong Fei. First use him and see. If he is not suited, then this servant will switch him for you. Dofu briefly introduced him and then took the two guards to withdraw. After a day of tossing around in the carriage, Mu Han Jang felt tired, so he half leaned on the sofa Divian's big welcoming pillow. Yun Ju immediately moved the small teacup on the table to the small side next to the soft Divian. He also carefully removed the small incense burner on the table as well. Muhan Jang smiled and beckoned Yun Ju to come in front of him. How old are you? Responding to Wang Fei, this servant's age is thirteen. Although young, Yun Ju was not the least bit timid. The childish voice had not changed yet and sounded crispy and lively. I'll have to fix that. His pair of big eyes were also very quick-witted, very lovable. When did you first... When did you enter the palace? Do you know how to read? Muhan Jang felt that the child was cute. He took off his shoes and moved his legs up, letting him sit on the footstool. This servant from the age of eight followed uncle into the palace. All of the matters in the palace I know from... All of the matters in the palace I know of somewhat. Yun Ju was not pretentious, neatly sitting cross-legged on the footstool. The servant, after entering the palace, followed uncle to study. Although I am slow-witted and slow at reading, I can recognize all the words used every day. Today, the books in the small study were organized by me. If Wang Fei can't find a book, at a, by all means... By all means, ask the ser servant. I can definitely find it for you. Entering the palace at eight years old. When Jing Xiao exited the imperial palace and was established and had established the prince's residence, he was basically already there. Mu Han Jang ordered this little boy servant. Sorry. Mu Han Jang pondered. This little boy servant was really useful. Wait, the small study? You mean my books are in the small study? Yes. Wang Yi ordered it before going out this morning. Many of the managers in charge of this servant have been busily arranging it for the whole day. Yun Ju smiled and said that now the entire palace knows that Wang Yi cherishes his this newly wedded male wife. Following such a well-regarded master perhaps is even more superior than his cousin who follows the Wang Yi. Although it is called the small study, it is not too small. The two large boxes of books brought from the Marquis's residence have been arranged, and a bookcase of new books has also been added. The ebony desk, the instruments, and chest equipment, and chess equipment, and the calligraphy and painting tools were all available. With a glance, one could see that many of the things were newly added, all of them in the simple yet elegant light colors that he liked. Mu Han Jiang lingered in the elegant and luxurious study, and he couldn't say what it felt like in his heart. There has never been anyone who has cared about him so attentively. Jing Xiao slept in the house for a while and missed dinner time. You're going to hear some scratching in the background. Please ignore it. It's just Yui fluffing up the carpet before he lays down. He, is, he has finally allowed me to stop giving scratches. 
Mu Hanjang had the kitchen make a bowl of millet porridge and two side dishes to bring into the inner room. The interior was dark without lights, and from the bed there were slight breathing sounds. Mu Hanjang had the servants retreat, lit two of the small lamps, then slowly rolled up the curtain. Woo. Jing Xiao was slowly awakened by the ray of light, and only after groaning did he blink open his eyes. Get up and eat something. It's a little late. I had the kitchen cook some millet porridge. Wang Yi should eat a little less to avoid indigestion. Mu Hanjang said warmly while draping an outer robe around Jing Xiao, who sat up. Jing Xiao stared blankly, with still with a foolish expression on his face, until he was handed the bowl. How did Jing, how did Jin Qing suddenly become so gentle? And he wasn't putting up defenses anymore? The small study, it's very beautiful. Really, thank you. Mu Hanjang looked down, saying the sentence three words at a time. Usually, if it was just saying a thank you politely, it was very easy. But these words he just said were incomparably awkward when he spoke them. Jun Qing? Jing Xiao looked at him with a pleasant surprise. He caught the hand that was hiding in his sleeve with one excited movement. You finally kit You finally didn't call me Wang Yi. Wang... Wang Yi... Mu Hanjang's hand trembled, and, getting frust flustered by him, he forgot to say excuses. <coughs> Realizing that he was losing face again, Jing Xiao let go of the other's hand and picked up the chopsticks again. It's finished with only a thank you. I have never heard... I have never heard of anyone else who would give their male wife a study. Muhan Jang's already nervous heart sank, and he looked up at him. Jing Xiao, seeing his expression changed, just realized that his consistent cold tone scared him, so he quickly added, This prince wants a sincere thank you. Saying this, he pointed at his cheek. Wang, Wang Yi. Muhan Jang was really not sure how to respond this time. Or, letting me kiss you once is also fine. Jing Xiao moved close to his ear and said softly with a voice that slightly carried magnetism. Just a second, my Jenga tail. <laughs> Oops. One second. Just a second. After eating that delicate midnight snack, Jing Xiao satisfactorily wandered to the small study room to dig out his family's Wong Fei, who had hidden himself. Just now, this person hadn't waited for him to retrieve, e to retrieve his requested sincere thanks before getting up and fleeing. Looking at the person seriously reading Da Qian's Laws, sitting at the table, whose tips of his ears were the color of agate, Jing Xiao's heart squeezed, and he couldn't help but raise a hand to his lips to stifle his laugh. Strolling to the person's side, he said, It's getting late now. Isn't it about time for Wang Fei to return to our bedroom? It's so funny. <laughs> Come here. Come here and let me hold you. You're being ridiculous now. Oh, you're fine. Here, what's this? Sniff here. Look at that. No, no kisses. You're spoiled. This here. No, not out there. What's this? There you go. <laughs> Middle nose to the microphone. <laughs> yeah, what's that? You're a good boy. You're a good boy. You're the baby. But you can't keep trying to hog mom. Like you have to either go out 
which I feel bad about. What if I need to go outside? Can you do it? I can't keep giving you tummy rubs. People want to hear the rest of the story. I'm on the clock. Like, this is, this is, oh, that's a nice little boy. Okay, you go down. Down again. If you want out, you let me know. Do you want out? Okay, he does want out. Okay, one moment. Okay, no, you're going to go out the door. Okay, apologize. That was a little ridiculous, but yeah. It's just that he's uh, being ridiculous. That's all I got. I got nothing else. What that's that's doing that. Oh wow! I had to really go over for that. There we go. Do this. No. Okay. Alrighty. I always forget to hydrate, so just a moment here and then I hydrate. Mm. Alrighty. <clears throat> and marker. Chapter 10. Peach Blossom Stuffed. I will avenge you. I do. I forget to I forget to hydrate at all times. It's ridiculous. I am very bad at it. Even when I'm doing my actual audiobooks, I am very, very bad at it. I was waiting for a page break. I don't know why I'm not interrupting anything. <laughs> oh, uh, I should say, uh, I'm fairly, I think, I'm not even going to say I'm fairly certain. I think think there's about um let's go a 65 percent chance that this story gets a little spicy in places i don't think it's anything explicit i don't think but could be wrong but just fyi there could be some spiciness <laughs> jen is still not sleepy hearing the words go back to the bedroom Mu Han Jiang's ears turned even more red. Jing Xiao felt that his experience exper uh, felt that his appearance was extremely cute. He raised his hand and closed the boring law book. He pulled him up and said, "I am also not too sleepy. Let's go. I will take you. I will take you to a place." Wang Ye. Mu Han Jiang was pulled up by him and stood up. Seeing his eagerness, he could only follow him outside, comforting himself that perhaps he would forget about the gift of thanks in a little while. No, he won't forget. When they left the study, they wandered and circled around before unexpectedly going into the garden. Wait for me. Stopping under the rock garden, Jing Xiao squeezed into the cave and shortly after brought out a small basket with a lid. What is this? Mu Han Jiang was a little curious. There was actually something hidden in the garden of the prince's palace? Jing Xiao's appearance seemed like that of a child secretly hiding toys. Jing Xiao laughed mischievously and did not answer just took him to climb the highest rock formations of the garden, on which was built a delicate organ... Octagon, thank you. On which was built a delicate octagonal pavilion. You hold this. 
Jing Xiao handed the small basket to the person next to him. After he handed it over, he reached out and took the man into his arms. Wang Yi! Jing... Mu Han Zheng cried out in surprise, but before he reacted, he was already on top of the pavilion. This is the highest place in the palace. Jing Xiao smiled and sat down between the tiles and patted the position next to him. Come and sit. Mu Han Zheng could only slowly sit beside him. The top of the... The top of the pavilion was inclined, and he always felt a little like he would slide down at any time. When Jing Xiao saw that he was very cautious and solemn, he felt it amusing, so he reached out and grabbed his wrist. I'm here. You won't be able to fall. Being brought to lean on Jing Xiao by his powerful arm, Mu Han Jiang moved a little moved a little and sat up straight. Seeing that the hand on his waist did not seem to let go, he could only let him do as he wished. After all, they had paid respects to the heavens and the earth when they had gotten married already, and there was also no one around them. They don't have to be so conscious of etiquette. Even if Jing Xiao wanted to do something more excessive, he also wouldn't be able to resist. Seeing that there was no objections from the person next to him, Jing Xiao confidently continued to hold him. <laughs> this star-picking pavilion is my favorite place in the palace. On a clear night, I can see a sky full of stars. Muhan Jiang com complied with his embrace and raised his head to look. Sure enough, the sky was full of starlight, without any eaves to block them. All around them seemed like a blue dome of heaven, as if they were placed in the middle of a river of stars. The corner of his mouth could not help but reveal a smiling expression. It's beautiful. Chen has never seen such a vast canopy of stars. As a bastard, he wasn't able to act as willfully as Mu Lingbao. Ever since he was a child in the Marquis's residence, he had to abide by the proper etiquette everywhere. There was always someone watching to mock him for making one wrong step. Never mind doing something like climbing onto the roof of a pavilion. If he was caught, he guessed he would be gifted a beating by his father. Have you never climbed a tree when you were young? Jing Xiao was a little surprised. When boys were young, they should have all been very naughty. When he was a child, he often climbed the trees in the imperial gardens to grab birds' nests. He would also climb to the top of trees to see stars in the middle of the night. When the people in the palace found out, he would be spanked by his mother empress. But his mother empress hated to use a heavy hand, so the next day he would leap and frisk about and continue to do bad things. When he heard about Jing Xiao's great achievements when he was young, Mu Han Jiang couldn't help but laugh out loud. He didn't expect the majestic prince to be unexpectedly naughty and mischievous like this when he was a child. But he couldn't help but be envious. When he was young, no one educated him. His mother did not read much and could only teach him how to compute things on the abacus and how to take care of the accounts. And afterwards, when his father found out, he also became very angry, saying his mother misguided him and sent him to the family's tutors to study in advance, not allowing him to speak to his mother much anymore. Learning to read so early. No wonder you are just like an old man at such a young age. Ching Xiao could not help but laugh at him. Mu Han Zheng glared at him. Wang Yi's age still falls short of Chen's. Eh? Jing Xiao had accidentally blurted that out. In his past life, he lived into his thirties. Naturally, he felt that the current Jin Qing was still young, and he couldn't help but awkwardly rub his nose. 
He took the small basket by the side and diverted the topic. This is the peach blossom wine I saved. Every year there is only one small jar. You taste it. In the basket is a small white porcelain bottle and two small cups of the same color. Jing Xiao lifted open the bottle stoppers and poured out two cups, the clear liquid in the lustrous the clear liquid in the lustrous white porcelain cup exhibited a light pink color. Wang Yi. Wang Yi has already drank so much in the afternoon. Shouldn't drink again. Mu Han Jiang took the cup and pressed down the hand that Jing Xiao wanted to use to drink. <laughs> I've already gotten sober from that little bit of wine. What strong liquors have I not drank in the army barracks? Jing Xiao was unconcerned. This wine is very light. You won't get drunk even after drinking ten cups. Mu Han Jiang listened, raised his hand, and delicately tasted a mouthful of the cup of wine. The sweet taste with a touch of floral fragrance was swallowed, and his lips and teeth filled with the fragrance of peach blossoms. He could not help but drink the contents of the whole cup. Seeing him enjoying it, Jing Xiao handed the bottle to him. After all, one of his hands was still placed on the waist of the other. Not convenient. The North March... The North Marquis have all been fierce generals, generation after generation. Why didn't your father teach you pra to practice martial arts? On this point, Jing Xiao has always been very curious. In the North Marchioness's household, irrespective of whether someone was a legitimate wife's or a concubine's son, all of them must learn some martial arts. Yet Jin Xing did not know any. Muhan Zheng listened to him ask about this, and... and the brilliance in his eyes instantly darkened. He silently added wine to his cup. My veins were frozen badly when Chen was a child, and the doctor said that Chen could not practice martial arts. Just FYI, when he says Chen, it's he's referring to himself. It's not a name, it's more like a short form of saying this servant. Just FYI. What? Mm. What? Jing Xiao looked at him with horror. How were you frozen badly? He was the son of the great North Marquis's household. Even if his position was lower than the heirs, it was unlikely for there to be people that would mistreat him, right? Twenty-seven days after the winter solstice, Chen fell into the pond. Mu Han Zheng drank the wine in his cup and added another cup. His lips evoked a self-deprecating smile. Not being able to practice martial arts was a deep sorrow in his heart. When he was a child, his father said that his roots and bones were good. He had even wanted to teach him the marksmanship methods that were passed down through the generations. Later, after the doctor said that he could not practice martial arts, his father rarely showed interest in him. Only when he saw him calculating things on the abacus in the house would he get angry and throw and break his small abacus, throwing the four-year-old throwing the four-year-old him to the family's tutors. Jing Xiao frowned, watching him drink cup after cup of wine, and reached out to grab his cup. This peach blossom this peach blossom wine is to be tasted delicately. Who would just drink it like this? Let Wang Yi see. Let Wang Yi see something worth ridiculing. Mu Hanjang smiled with difficulty and picked the cup and packed the cup into the small basket. It's getting late now. Woo. His body was suddenly pulled over and thrown onto Jing Xiao's arms. Who pushed you in? Jing Xiao's eyes had the rare, gloomy, 
gloomy look in them. As if there was a storm brewing in them. Normally, all rich families' houses around the edges of the pond would be laid a brick border. Besides, a young master running to go and play by the pond, he does not believe that there was no one following. Who could... How could... <clears throat> How could they just unfeelingly watch him fall into the pond in the winter? Chen fell in by my... Chen fell in myself. Mu Hanjang lowered his eyes and was unwilling to say more. The lotus pond of that time appeared in front of his eyes. He was young then and couldn't remember anything else clearly. He only remembered that his grandmother had made him a new white rabbit fur cloak, and could only remember that little, f and could only remember that little fatty who was taller than him, by two heads with hands filled with pastries, and then it was the icy pond water, and the snowy gray sky. Jing Xiao looked at the person in his arms and only felt that his heart was hurting. He slowly lowered his head and dropped a gentle kiss on his lowered eyes. When he opened his eyes in surprise, he did not stop. Between his eyebrows, on his forehead, kissing each of his cheeks one by one, seeming as if he could save him from that ice-cold nightmare. Wong Yu Mu Hong Jang's, Mu Han Jang's body stiffened. When Jing Xiao kissed his mouth, he couldn't help but make a sound. Jing Xiao lifted him up, seeing the sky full of starlight that all shone in the eyes of the person in his arms. He could not help but hold him tightly to the chest. I will take revenge for you. Such a beautiful person, even hugging him in his arms, he was afraid to hurt him. Yet there was actually some person who dared to harm him. Imagining a little Jin, imagining a little Jin Qing being pushed into the water on the twenty seventh day of the winter solstice, winter solstice. How scared! How cold! And how painful it must have been. Feeling the strength hugging him tightly behind his back, Mu Han Jiang slowly reached out and returned the embrace. It would be fine to just let him be a little weak. Just a little sad, just a little reluctant to part with this warmth. Hydrated. Mm. Ow, ow, ow. The next day, after eating breakfast, Jing Xiao changed into a casual outfit to go out. I have to go out for the day, estimating that I won't be back in time for lunch. Mm. Mu Han Jiang helped him hand his jade pendant. Helped him... No, that was right. Helped him... Uh, I think it was just misspelled helped him hang his jade pendant on his waist and didn't ask where he was going. After they had gotten married, the emperor relieved Jun... Oh, yeah, okay. The emperor relieved Cheng Wang... Cheng Wong... Wong? Wang? Yeah, Wong. The emperor relieved Cheng... Oh, I gotta ask Google Sensei. Sorry... One moment, please. Um, but, um, hello, Google Sensei. Da, 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 da. Chen Wang. Chen Wang. Okay. Chen Wang. Okay. I was wrong. That's why we asked Google Sensei. <sighs> hey. <coughs> I'd like to get affiliate just so that I could, just for the emotes, so that I could put out 
and Google Sensei would be one. <laughs> We're not sure what this is. Google Sensei. <clears throat> the emperor relieved Cheng Wang, Cheng Wang of attending the morning court for nine days. This time, he was definitely not going to the court. As for other matters, it was not good for him to get involved. I will come back before dinner. If you feel bored, take two Imperial Guards and go out for a walk. Jing Xiao, seeing that he didn't ask where he was going, couldn't help but say a few more words. I heard that in a garden in the south of the city, some male wives often get together. Later, you can also go there and play. Is there? Is there? This is the first time Chen has heard about it. Seeing him with an expression of, if you don't answer me earnestly, I will keep on talking. <laughs> Mu Hanjeng couldn't help but smile, so he finally responded with a long sentence. <laughs> That's so cute. I can't even. That's so cute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Jing Xiao left perfectly contented and went to the outer courtyard and called the steward Mr. That Mr. Yun is really throwing me off. What did we call him before? It wasn't Yun, Mr. Yun before. Oh, that's going to bug me. Wait, wait, I, I can, I can find it. We can do it. We have the technology. Let me just uh, do it where, just a second. I have got a theory, but it's a demon. Nothing to me. No, something isn't right. No, I've got a theory. I'm just dreaming, and we're all stuck inside of the Bucky Bow and Arrow Man. I've got a theory. We should work this out. It's getting eerie. What's this cheery singing all about? I've got a theory. There could be witches, and we could love, and we could love being them. <laughs> and women power, and I'll be over here. <clears throat> I've got a theory. It doesn't matter. Why can't we persevere together? What's in this place that we can't get out of the box? We've all been there. Oh, didn't like that. It's really easy. Why should we care? Didn't like that either. What the hell? Am I doing the wrong one? It's yin, right? Or does it need to be capitalized? Eh, nope. I apologize. I'm looking for any other instances. It is not coming up. Oh, that's why it's not coming up. <laughs> I'm so silly. Okay. It wasn't, it wouldn't have come up. So let me just. Why <clears throat> should we care? Is it no? Oh, Steward Yun. <clears throat> okay, I'm just gonna take out the Mister because that's what's really freaking throwing me off here. Um. Yikes. Okay, no, that's not. Not gonna, okay. So yeah. Sorry for the interlude. Let's pull that back up. Yeah, so we're just going to switch that to Steward Yun because the Mr.'s really freaking throwing me off. Okay. Sorry. Jing Xiao left perfectly contented and wait to the, went to the enter... <sighs> no. And went to the outer courtyard and called over Steward Yun. Steward Yun. Although that makes it sound like his name is Steward Yun. <laughs> the Steward Yun. Eh. Sorry. 
Go investigate about exactly. Go investigate about exactly how. Fucking Christ. Sorry, 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 sorry. Go investigate about how exactly back then the North Marchioness's bastard son fell into the pond. Did you really have to call him his bastard son? Although I guess back then that was the name. Yes, the subordinate will... Yes, the subordinate will immediately go arrange for this. Steward Yun... I gotta go... Oh, fuck, I can't. Mr. Yun kept a long beard, and from his manner down to his bones, he seemed like some sort of deity. Will Yun... Will Wong Yi be riding a horse or carriage? Riding a horse. After that, Jing Xiao's little boy servant, Yun Xi. Si. Si. Yeah, and there's no X. Yun Si. Well, that's better. Led over a black horse. Hmm. Okay, there's just a... Oh, fucking Christ, I'm sorry. Try again. <clears throat> Led over a black horse and walked over. Jing Xiao rubbed its glossy and gleaming mane, saying, Xiao He, little black. Long time no see. I'm not doing a horse voice. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's all you're getting. The black horse snorted and immediately rubbed against Jing Xiao. Xiao He was a wild horse from the grasslands that he had tamed. His temper was resolute and upright, but although he wasn't some purebred, famed horse, but he could compare to even those prized colts of those high-ranking generals. Because it was much smarter than the average horse, it would avoid obstacles by itself. During that year, if Xiao He were there, he and Jin Qing, he and Jin Qing would not have had to jump off the cliff. However, in that case, he would not have the opportunity to start over again. The so-called disasters and blessings relying on each other's existence, whether it was good fortune or calamity, who would be able to discern? Official Lee visited yesterday, but said that it was nothing important. After hearing Wang Yi was not here, he left. Mr. Yun reported on what he had happened yesterday. Li Yang Qing. Seeing Steward Yun nod, Jing Xiao frowned. This person was the last person recorded in the dark blue accounting book. If he comes again, then you tell him to wait until tomorrow and then go to the Im and then to go to the immortal gathering pavilion in the afternoon. Yes, Mr. Yun agreed, and watched Jing Xiao depart on the horse. Sorry about the end of that chapter, that was awful. I don't know if you have this, but with certain words, um, trigger certain memories, and we'll always have the same... Um, connection, connotation with it. For me, I have a few. <laughs> For me, theory. So whenever anyone says I have a theory or just the word theory, it always strikes up. I have Giles's voice from Buffy the Vampire Slayer when he starts singing his I have a theory. And it will happen. It will trigger me every single time. Also, when someone mentions a horse, I will forever have the audio clip in my head of from of Shiryuki from uh Snow um what is it Snow White with the red hair but Shiryuki crying because she doesn't know how to ride a horse and she's drunk so that's <laughs> a horse I, I can't even ride a horse thank you so much for Su Supernatural for hanging out with me <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, yeah, I appreciate you uh, hanging in there. 
You have a wonderful night. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So, yeah, so I always think, oh, thank you so much. I also, if you're interested, have a podcast called Saird's Audio Fan Fictions. It's everywhere, and I read fan fiction, and so that's a thing. So that's if you're ever interested or need something in the background. It's a good choice. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much again. Cheers. Have a great night. Whew. My John. <clears throat> Sorry, I need to take another sip of water or drink or something. I need supernatural fix in the background. Do you mean supernatural the show or supernatural the um actual thing? Oh, if you like ghost stories, you should absolutely 100% check out um Ghoul Intentions. It is a ghost paranormal Oh, the show this time. Unfortunately, I don't do any supernatural fix. But yeah, if you're if you like the ghosty haunty uh, stuff, check out Ghoul Intentions. It is a podcast. It is read by J. Michael Tatum and Jamie Markey, two very awesome, famous, actually working <laughs> um, uh, voice actors. Yeah, and they love the creepy stuff. They tell ghost, ghost stories that people have sent in, like real life stuff. And then they sometimes go into the history of the haunted locations. It's very cool. It's a very good one. Although, just be aware, um, if you listen to it too much, <laughs> you will become haunted. I don't say that jokingly. <laughs> just know this. It's a side effect of listening to it too much. Truth. Okay. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's honest to goodness, I had to stop listening to it. <laughs> Because shit started to happen. And I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I'll listen to other people go through shit. Not for me. But yeah, so that's is a good one. Alrighty. I get the yawns out. We're making great time. Like really good time. So we're halfway through. <clears throat> On to chapter eleven. Okay, so yeah, if you're sensitive to those kinds of things, you can try one. For me, shit didn't start to happen until I was had gotten through like the first season. So it took a while. But then I'm very guarded against all of that stuff. Like I've got crystals, I've got dream catchers, I've got sage, I've got incense, I've got <laughs> like nothing is getting in. So it took a while, but a lot of people started writing in saying, just FYI, your podcast is haunted. So, <laughs> yeah, so you can try it. My favorite ones are when uh, J. Michael Tatum would go into the um, the history of the places. Those things were cool. Um, but in other words, mm -mm, had to give it up. <laughs> But yeah, so if you're uh, ever on my podcast, mine is all romance. It's uh, right now I'm going through a Buffy one. Okay, so yeah, you feel me on this. It's, uh, yeah, it took a while. I, I found out that I wasn't experiencing anything when I was at home. But as soon as I went to the cottage and went away from my safe space, things were, and I'm like, mm -mm, I'm not bringing this home. <laughs> It's really creepy. Um, but yeah, if you want some non-paranormal, I should say paranormal rather than super, some non-paranormal stuff, I've got I've got a Buffy ongoing fic. I've got Modao Zushi. I've got Yuri on Ice. I will be having a, um, I've had a request to finally release my My Hero Academia fic on here. So... Or on the podcast, though so that should be going up at some point, I guess. <laughs> Vaguely threatening. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Especially if you have a cat and then that asshole pretends to see stuff and you're like, are you pretending or do you really see something? 
and you're only 50% sure that he's doing it just to be an asshole and scare the crap out of you. <laughs> but yes. Yeah, my cat does that all the time, especially when I'm watching any of those supernatural shows. I can't watch them on Home Alone. <laughs> See things that the other one doesn't care. <laughs> I want... I would wonder if bunnies were better about it than cats because cats, they do the thing where it's like they do the sudden head tilt and then they go up and they look like they're meowing at something or pawing at something. I'm like, you're just being an asshole. You're not, you don't actually see it. And, but I wonder if rabbits would be less so, <laughs> like less creepy about it. Like I see it, but I'm going to not interact with it. Whereas cats are like, you're on the same plane as me. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I always love the differing personalities of of the animal of our animals. <laughs> I just have this mental image of of you and the one buddy huddled bunny huddled in the corner just like shaking and the other one like what the hell is your problem shut up and go to sleep it's fine <laughs> there's nothing there oh the other one is anxious i wouldn't i would not do good with an anxious animal because i'm already anxious <laughs> it's like i need you to help me not me help you Although Yui saw fireworks for the first time this last weekend, and he loved the ones that didn't make the sound, but as soon as it made the sound, he was not a fan. <laughs> Just huddled in the corner. <clears throat> Alrighty, so we're about an hour and eight minutes in. Yeah, we're doing good on time. Let's see. Maybe calm if someone else is freaking out. That almost makes it easier, doesn't it? Like it's it's better. It's like okay, you you be scared for me. I will be so focused on calming you down. I'm okay. Although for me personally, I'm freaking out internally. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, righty then. Oh, deep breath. Okay. Thank you so much again for joining me. It's been awesome to have you here. I always read better when I know that there's someone listening. So I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much again. And you have a wonderful evening. And hopefully we'll see you again sometime soon. That'd be great. And now I'm rubbing the lucky cat. Hopes that we get a good stream. For anyone watching this, does anyone here know how to polish brass? I have a solid brass lucky cat and I love him, but I just can't seem to get him to shine. But I'm about to be night night. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely go to bed I only do late night Wednesday streams because I have uh, Thursdays I don't have my brick and mortar job I have a stay at home job so I can sleep in so yes absolutely have a nice wonderful evening and at least this wasn't a scary story to listen to before you go to bed it's a happy funny story rather than the child falling into the pool but he comes back to win it all so that's good oh goodness Okay. Oh, alrighty. Let's get going to chapter 11. Making good time. Oh, sleepings are the absolute best.
Yes, absolutely. Absolute best. Last weekend, for the first time in about a month and a half, I got to sleep in. And I think, and yes, I know exactly what time. I slept in till 10.47 a.m. and it was glorious. <laughs> I literally woke up and went, is this what it feels like to be rested? <laughs> like I was shocked. Okay, we're talking about it and then I'm getting the yawns. Great. <laughs> night, night. Alrighty, moving on. Alright, here we go. Chapter 11. Marker? Chapter 11. Bai Jung. Bai Jung. Yeah. It is rumored that King Chen was tyrannical, killing 100,000 prisoners of war on the battlefield and his name could cure children from crying at night. So he is the boogeyman, apparently. The black steed carrying the handsome prince swooshed by on the streets, and the common people who set up stalls on the streets kept their calm, and one after the other got out of the way. Did you see? If you keep on be- mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Did you see? If you keep on being noisy, then we'll let the Cheng Wang take, take you away. The woman who sold vegetables threw down her basket and pointed to the silhouette flying by the child who wouldn't stop crying. Jing Xiao reined in his horse and slowed down his speed and happened to hear this sentence. Could not help but knit his brows. Sorry, I just need to see if this is male or female. Doesn't say. Fuck. Sorry. Rumor says that the Cheng Wang is tyrannical, killing 100,000 prisoners of war on the battlefield just to... Just... Battlefield. Stop. Just a mention of his name causes young children's nightmares. This was one of the justifications for why, during that time, those people accused him of the official misconduct. Oh, that's better. This was one of the justifications for why, during that time, those people accused him of official misconduct. He killed and took prisoner. 100,000 people. Really ridiculous. Not even meant, not to mention the campaign against the Xiong, what is it? Xiong New nomads. He himself only brought 50,000 troops and horses. The entire Xiong Xu military didn't even, did not even have 100,000 people. During that time, he led 2,000 troops to surround the Xiong Xu with their general trying to with their general trying to urge them to surrender but those people's nature was fierce even facing death they would not surrender so he just let people kill wave by wave at the very end the general when trying to take a group of soldiers to break out of the enclosure he was beheaded by jing xiao the living people they were able to capture was less than 500. Moreover, each of them hated all the Chinese troops to the bone. If they did not kill them, then it would cause no end of trouble. It turned out that rumors have always been circling since this time. The weather was sunny and cloudless today. The sun slid in from the open window, and the wide sandalwood desk was warm. Mu Hun Zhang sat at the desk, holding an accounting ledger and carefully checking his dowry. The North Marquess's house had a great line of business, but their numbers were also large. After calculating, the total amount of property allocated to him was less than 30,000 silver tails. His mother, who did the accounting, had looked through it and could pick out any problems. 
Although 30,000 did not make him lack too much, it also did not let him receive any additional advantages. Moreover, they could not give him any ancestral properties or land. And after the passing of the new year, the actual silver given to him was basically nothing. All that was left to him were some untouchable villages, farmland, and then some silver was also used to deal with his wedding attire and the like. In the eastern outskirts, he remembered that there is barren forest, with black locust plants growing thickly in... Oh. With black, lo with black locust plants growing thickly and craggy, rocky soil, making it impossible to plant anything. It was also not suitable for building a courtyard. It was basically a waste, and this vast piece of soil still accounted for most of his family property. Mu Han Zheng sneered. Concubine Du was really not afraid of people criticizing her behind her back. However, in this way, he basically has no cash in his hands. The 100,000 tails that his mother gave him was a lump sum, and he did not want to move this sum of money unless absolutely necessary. <clears throat> okay, yeah. Wang Fei, the secondary wife has come from these court. Young Ju scuttled into the stutter study and said in a panic, What does she want to do coming here? Mu what does she want to do coming here? <clears throat> Mu Han Zheng frowned and put the ledgers into the cabinet. Didn't she just come over after breakfast to pay respects? It must be about the matter of the household allowances. If she says that it will take a few months to hand over the account books, you must not agree with her. Yan Ju wrinkled his nose, his, ton, his tone quite resentful. Hearing this, Mu Han Zhang didn't say anything, only invited Madame Song into the small study. Song Ling Xin skillfully smiled as she walked in. She visited rather rudely previously. Hoping Wang Fei will not blame. Mu Han Zhang was impatient in dealing with her, and after exchanging civilities for a couple of sentences, he asked her what her issue was. What the issue was. According to the customs, after Wang Fei has crossed the threshold, all the economic affairs of the family should be handed over to you. It is only that the prince's palace has always distributed the silver first every month. The first of every month. There are many affairs this month. Handing it over now to Wang Fei, I am afraid things will go wrong. So, Qi came to ask Wang Fei to allow this subordinate to retain it. Song Ling Xin said with a smile. Mu Han Zhang looked down playing with the white jade paperweight on the table, thumb unconsciously rubbing the smooth and round, smooth and rounded edge. This is a small habit he has when he thinks about things. <clears throat> Since that is the case, you can continue to manage it for a few days. As for the supervision of the other wives... Tonight, wait for Wang Yi to return, and then we will discuss it. Seeing that this person was not bothered, Song Ling Xin's complexion turned green, but she short shortly regained her smile. I'm not sure if that's what they mean by saying this, but green is, is associated with jealousy in, the, in Chinese culture. So... I'm not sure if that has something to do with if she's just... I don't know. Just pointing it out. Green was interesting there to me. Yes, we still need to seek Wang Yi's opinion. Just 
just Chi saying it is not the most important. There is one more thing. As she said this, she put a small book from her hands down onto the table. What is this? Muhan Jang glanced at it. There was no writing on the book cover, only a painted peony flower. These are the arrangements for the dates of attending to Wang Yi's bed. As Song Ling Xin said it, she always felt that confronting a male Wang Fei to talk about these things with was a little embarrassing. But they couldn't just not talk about it. She has taken... She has talked it over with our two younger sisters, and we wrote all of the discussed and we wrote all of the discussed dates on there, inviting Wang inviting Wang Fei to look it over. The earlier we can determine this, the better. It it as it will per, sorry about that. As it will permit to us per, as it will permit us to prepare the management arrangements. This subject also made Mu Han Zheng somewhat uncomfortable, and so after expressing that he understood, he waved his hand to dismiss her back to the West Court. <clears throat> In the suburbs of Beijing, Cheng Wang's, Cheng Wang's Villa. Ow. This villa was bestowed upon him by the emperor. Behind it was a tall, inclined mountain, and on the mountain was lush green vegetation and the babbling of brooks. It was the villa he stayed at during the summertime. The subordinate greets Wang Yi. Once he entered the villa, a tall man in black clothing and black clothing took the lead, stepping forth to make one's salutations. Where's Rung? Where's Ren Feng? Jing Xiao handed the horse to one of the servants welcoming him and asked the big man dressed in black. The commander is in the martial arts practice arena. The subordinate will go fetch him. Try that again. The subordinate will go fetch him. No need. You can just follow me to go and take a look. Jing Xiao placed both his hands behind his back not rushing, but not moving too slowly either through the crowd. Wooden porch... Oh, sorry. Hmm, I don't know why I'm messing up so much. Not rushing, but not moving too slowly either through the round wooden porch heading west of the villa. The area of the villa is much larger than that of the palace in the city. The entire west side has been coveted into a martial arts arena. In the center of the arena is a three-foot-high wooden platform, and the weaponry was placed on a rack on top of the platform. At this time, two people wearing gray Imperial bodyguard uniforms were busily sparring on the platform. One person wielded a broadsword, and the other wielded a pike. Um, a pike is... Not like what you would think. Think long black wooden pole with a very sharp, very narrow um, arrowhead type spear on the end. Let me pull it up here. And just as I realize I'm explaining this, and it's like, we could just look at it if you wanted. Uh, let me see here. my spelling. Yeah, like that. Because I looked at these before when I heard it, it's like, oh, because well, I'm imagining in my head, I'm imagining like, um, in my head, I'm imagining what, like um, a wooden pike. But I know, it's like this. It's very pretty. How is my description though? That's pretty good. That's a pretty good description. Okay. <laughs> <clears> hmm. <throat> So, 
One person wielded a broadsword and the other wielded a pike. One would attack the other and the other would follow suit both below other would follow suit period below the pack well, before uh, sorry 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 and i've lost where i was where the hell was i where the fuck was i Oh god. Uh there. Okay. Below the platform were a crowd of people wearing the same grey-colored Imperial bodyguard uniforms. Once a brilliant bout of sparring occurred, they would all shout and yell praises. It was extremely lively. When Jing Xiao came, he just happened to see that the broadsword-wielding competitor had been thrown off the stage by his opponent. He sudden <laughs> his sudden powerful thrust that caught his adversary off guard was quite beautiful. Good! Wang Yi! Everyone only just noticed the arrival of their master, and they all knelt down to pay respects one by one. A man dressed in black exercise clothing with a lanky stature walked out from the crowd and knelt down on one knee in front of, J in front of Jing Xiao. The, support the subordinate was not aware of Wang Yi's arrival. Please excuse this one for not going out to meet you, hoping Wang Yi for forgiveness. You rascal, what are you acting for? Jing Xiao permitted everyone to rise and gave his head a slap. This man, dressed in black, was the commander that everyone spoke of. This villa housed the 200 guards who belonged to the Cheng Wang's, to the Cheng Wang, yeah, Wang's inner circle of guards. Ren Fang was the commander of these guards. <laughs> Ren Fang smiled and stood up. The scar that cut across his left eyebrow to the, to the other corner of his face made him look rather fearful. That was wrong. Made him look rather fearsome. But the way his face became round when smiling actually made him seem rather simple and honest. The last time Mr. Yun said this subordinate was too vulgar and not understanding the et and not understanding of etiquette. So the subordinate wanted to learn some of those high-ranking officials' etiquette. Jing Xiao raised his eyebrows. Just you? After he finished speaking, he gave him a slap again, grabbing his collar and dragged him onto the stage. Don't bother with those useless things. Come accompany Cheng Wang to loosen his muscles and bones. Ren Fang immediately complained. Wang Yi, this subordinate has just fought for four hours. Less nonsense. Jing Xiao ignored him and just threw him a weapon. He lifted the broadsword and charged forth to slash at the <laughs> with the big knife. <laughs> By noon, Jing Xiao, sure enough, had really not returned to the residence. Mu Hanjiang had lunch by himself, and then he went to the small study room with great interest. He threw the book with the painted peony flower on it aside. There was a rack of books in the study that did not belong to him. He has not had a chance to examine them carefully. Jing Xiao said last night, this small study would belong to him from now on, and he could recall all of the books there as he pleased. And he could read all of the books there as he pleased. Besides some of the new travel recollection essays he had, he had read yesterday, it seemed that there were some books here that he had already read. Muhan Jang guessed that the books Jing Xiao placed here before were the books that he didn't usually use, but hadn't stored away in any of the Ying Feng's pavilion's big study. He reached out and took out a set of books wrapped in blue-colored hard leather and put it on the desk. He slid out one volume out of the set to take a look. It turned out to be a military book. 
But to think about it, it would be strange if there were poetry verses in Jing Xiao's study. Slowly opening it, Mu Han Zhang could not help but widen his eyes. Between the orderly lines of black text were numerous, densely packed annotations written in vermilion ink. Oh, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I am just okay. Now, I've got, I'm holding Lucky Cat. We're going to do this again because this worked really well last night. So, we've got Lucky Cat. We're going to give Lucky Cat a little polish. And I think tonight I would like to end my stream have with 12 viewers. I was going to say this earlier, but I thought it sounded um, greedy or disrespectful. So we're giving Lucky Cat a little, little rub, little polish here and there. And we're thinking 12 viewers. 12, I would like to end today's stream with 12 viewers and then we'll raid and that'd be really good. Okay. Okay, Lucky Cat, you hear that? 12 viewers, please. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kiss on the head. Okay. We'll put Lucky Cat back. And then we'll do a little hydrate. He's a good kitty. And then we'll get started. Just But yeah, if anyone out there knows how to polish brass, I would love to know because I have tried the lemon and baking soda and that did hardly anything. And it didn't stop him from retarnishing. So, <clears throat> alrighty, marker. Chapter 12, sleeping. Jen Qing's hands are so beautiful. The vermilion calligraphy on it was visibly soft and immature. Looking at it, this book seems to have been around for some years. Muhan Jang flipped through the whole set of books one by one. It turned out that he was already working so hard since he was very young. It was no wonder that Jing Xiao was able to defeat the Xiongju the Xiong Yu in his teens, rise above his two imperial brothers and also receive a title, that of Cheng Wang, before them. <clears throat> Wang Fei, I went to go ask Sister Ji Xi. Wang Fei, I went to go ask Sister Ji Xi. Yan Ju bounced. Oh, sorry. All right, do that again for the third time. Wang Fei, I went to go ask Sister Ji Ji. Ji Xi. Yan Ju bounced in and moved in front of the desk while grinning. What did you ask? Mu Han Jiang, seeing him smile, put the book in his hand with the rest of the volumes and returned it to its original place. Previously, the schedule for attending Wang Yi's bed was set by the secondary wife. Each month, she would get 20 days, and the other two concubines would get four each. Yan Ju, thinking of Shi Ji's expression when she spoke, couldn't help but snicker. Those eight days are when the secondary wife's... Those eight days are when the secondary wife is menstruating. You idiot. Mu Hanjang glanced at this... <laughs> Mu Hanjang glanced at his little servant, who had a face with an evil smile, and helplessly shook his head. Having not yet married a girl like... <laughs> having not yet married a girl like... Ji... Ji Oh, sorry. Having a not yet married girl like Ji Xi explain this kind of thing, he really is. But Wang Yi has been out fighting wars all year round, and has rarely stayed overnight in the West Court. Yan Ju was afraid that his master would be uncomfortable in his heart, 
so he quickly added a sentence. So young yet so young yet so crafty. You understand a lot. Mu Hanjang knocked on Yin Ju's head. Of course, my uncle said that in a couple of years, it will be about time to find me a wife. Yun Ju shook his head proudly and picked up the book on the side. Wang Fei doesn't have the problem of menstruating. Why not arrange for Wang Yi to come to the East Court for 25 days and the rest of the days just give the... And the rest of the days just give them each one. Uh, I want that to be younger, actually. That's getting a little deep. Of course... Uh, let's just go back to this. Wang Fei doesn't have... The Wang Fei doesn't have the problem of menstruating. Why not arrange for Wang Yi to come to the East Court for 25 days, and the rest of the days just give them each one? How could that be? Mu Hanjang broke into laughter. If he arranged it like this, he was afraid that, very quickly, rumors would be spread about him envying the benevolent about him envying the benevolent and create an unfavorable reputation for himself. Although, thinking of that pain he had felt in the bridal room that day, he still had lingering fears. If he had to do that for most of the month, it would just be too hard to bear. Furrowing his brows, he opened the peony flower book. All of the previous records were all there, and they were according to the same and they were according to the same way that he had heard from Yunju. Sandwiched in the middle of the book were some papers. On them was written the new arrangements Madame Song had devised. The meaning was more or less that it was split by the fifteenth of each month. The first half of the month the Wang Yi would rest in the the Wang Yi would rest in the East Court with Mu Han Jiang at night. The second half, the side wife would get nine days. The side wife, the second half, the side wife would get nine days, and then each of the two concubines would get three. Is that fair? I can't. Uh, someone do the math for me. Let me know. Which family's first wife doesn't at least? Which family's first wife doesn't at least reserve 18 days? The side wife really schemed well. Okay, so, answered. Yun Ju stood by the side and couldn't help but curl his lips. These two years, when the side wife was the one to manage the household, his monthly allowance of silver has never risen. The red, en the red envelope he received at the end... The red envelope he received at the end of e the year, each... Ah, oh, fuck. Blah. Sorry. Just a sec. Okay, try that. The red envelope he received at the end of the year was less each year. Yet the few chambermaids she brought with her had quite a cushy and lucrative job. All the servants in the prince's mansion were long unsatisfied with her. That's the number one rule. Don't piss off the servants. Number one rule. You do not piss off the help. Number one rule. Muhan Jang raised his eyebrows. This arrangement, contrary to belief, was actually not bad for him. So he took the writing brush and, using powerful yet elegant calligraphy, copied word for word the secondary wife's arrangements in the painted flower book. When Jing Xiao came back... Oh. Page break. <clears throat> when Jing Xiao came back, it was already dark. His, he first took a shower and washed away the sweat and mud, then changed into a loose casual attire. Wang Yi, today... Li Deran came again. Your subordinates responded to him according to what you instructed. After dinner, Steward Yun came over to re and reported to Jing Xiao about the situation of today's visitors. I know. 
After saying that, Jing Xiao dealt with a few things and dismissed Steward Yun. Then he stretched, really wanting to just go lie down on the bed. Wang Yi, we just... Wang Yi, we just ate. You'll get indigestion. Mu Han Jiang stepped forward and pulled at him. Ugh, I'm tired. Jing Xiao was not willing. Today, after fighting so much in a day, his body was still sore. Mu Han Jiang saw him with no expression on his face, but his eyes were actually full of dissatisfaction. Like a child who was forced to get up from bed early, he resisted the urge to reach out and rub his head. He pulled him over to sit on the soft divian. Lean against this to help your indigestion. Lean against this to help your digestion. Jing Xiao blinked. Jin Qing was worried about him? As a result, his original unhappiness immediately vanished, pulling his family's Wang Fei to lean on the soft divian together. No, taking a walk will be fine. Wu Han Jiang couldn't help but laugh, then he sat up. As someone who always seized opportunities, Jing Xiao took advantage and, and laid down onto the other person's leg. Jun Qing, you help me massage my shoulders. They ache very much. Chen is not a servant girl. Don't know how to do this. Though Mu Han Jiang said this, he still pressed his hand on his shoulder. When he pressed a certain part, Jing Xiao suddenly sucked in some cold air. Hurts? Mu Han Jiang was startled. He didn't actually use any strength. How could he have hurt him? Hmm. It might be bruised, Jing Xiao said vaguely, not minding. Wang Yi went to practice martial arts today? Mu Jiang frowned. Opening up some of his collar, he saw a large patch of bruised flesh. Seeing this, he could only just summon someone to bring some med medicinal oil to help him circulate his blood. The warm and slender fingers that were moistened with the cooling medic medicated oil made contact with his skin, and Jing Xiao couldn't help but hold his breath. When the hand rubbed at where the bruise was, he could imagine the shape of that slender, good-looking hand that was without any calluses. Jing Xiao couldn't help but grab his other hand in front of him. Shining in the candlelight, the slender and beautiful hand looked flawless. Dispersed among the lustrous and soft skin, one could see several inconsistent inconspicuous blue-green blood vessel <sniffs> blue-green blood veins through his jade-like skin each slender finger was long like the stalk of jade-colored spring onion and the nails are smooth and tidy pulling it in the palm of his hand and kneading it like it was a <laughs> putting it in the palm of your hand and kneading it felt like it was very likable so he couldn't help but pull it to his lips and gently nibble on it. Wang Ye! Wang Ye! Wu Han Cheng was startled and quickly retracted his hand. Jun Ching's hand is so beautiful. Jing Xiao turned his body over and looked at him innocently. Wu Han Cheng was helpless and helped him to gather his clothing. Today... Madam Song came over to discuss the management of the household. Right now it is in the middle of the third month, so there are many things going on in the residence. Chen, seeing that she is willing to take care of it, thinks why not just let her manage it for a few more months. Jing Xiao, hearing this, furrowed his brow. He lifted his eyes to look at his expression but saw that he still maintained his mild expression and could not make anything out. Madame Song saying these words at this time was only her wanting to not hand over any power. But if she continued to be allowed to manage the household, Jen Qing's reputation in the residence would be very affected. He didn't believe Jen Qing, 
someone who was this smart would not be able to tell. He couldn't help but sigh. You are the Wong Fei. These things should be done according to your wish. If you find it too much of a bother, then let Du Fu, then let Du Fu handle it. I will have Song Ling Xin turn over the accounting books to you tomorrow. Having said so much these two days, Jin Qing was still sounding out his. Sorry. Yeah. Jin Qing was still sounding out his attitude towards him. Xing Xiao felt a little tired. Now that the rumors of his brutality have begun to spread in the capital, no one in this world was willing to trust in him. He silently got up. Jing Xiao did not look at the person on the divian again. Just took off his coat, just took off his coat and climbed into the bed. Wang Yi. Wu Hanjiang looked at Jing Xiao's back and felt a little ache in his heart. He realized that he was hurt by his pretentious words and pursed his lips, and also followed him onto the bed. Holding onto the arm of the person whose back was to him, he said, Wong Yi, Chen did not have that meaning. For the turning over the for the turning over of the account books, the accounting books from previous years, Chen Chen must look over first. It is better for the most recent account books to be handed over next month. Otherwise, for a period of time, Chen will be unfamiliar with it, and it will be a mess. Facing the wall, still not talking. Shaking his arm, still not talking. Wu Hanjiang moved over and sneakily glanced at Jing Xiao's face. He saw that the man's eyes closed. <laughs> he saw the man with his eyes closed and quietly called, Xiao, are you listening to me? Didn't hear it. <laughs> Didn't hear it. Jing Xiao turned his body back a little, but on his body was resting a person. So as he moved, he accidentally caused the person to fall onto his body. Thus he took this opportunity to bury his face into the pillow and stop moving. The person on his body couldn't help but release a muffled laugh out loud. Then I will say it again. Tomorrow, I will have them take out the account books from previous years for Chen to see. On the first day of the next month, I will have her hand over all the account books. With Jing Xiao hearing this, his heart was finally comfortable. With a flip of his body, he pressed the person who was on top of him under his body. Wang, Wang Yi. Mu Hanjiang didn't know how they were suddenly in such an ambiguous posture. Jing Shan wrinkled his brow and looked at the small, slightly parted pale lips and bent over, pressing his own lips onto them. Ooh. Mu Hanjiang's eyes widened, not knowing how to react. He only felt that the soft, warm lips were imprinted on his own. It was a light touch, like that of a dragonfly on water. But to him, it felt like a long time. This is a punishment. In the future, the next time you try to speak so politely with me, for every sentence you will be punished with one. Jing Xiao smiled, pleased with himself. I... Mu Hanjiang was speechless, so he could only turn his head, refusing to look at him. Yet his entire handsome face was flushed thoroughly with a bashful red. Jing Xiao, seeing him like this, only felt a movement in his heart. He couldn't help but kiss him again on his cheek. Then he followed along with his face and slid down his chin, nipping softly at his neck. Mmm. Mu Hanjiang's body couldn't help but tremble. His breathing had also become shorter and faster. Wang Yi, don't... Uh. Jing Xiao had already pulled away his lapel, finally kissing his collarbone. Hearing those words, he took a bite from the beautiful collar... He took a bite from the beautiful collarbones. Call me Xiao. 
<sighs> Mu Hun Jiang heard the person on top of his body breathe. Mu Hanjang heard the person on top of his body's breathing getting rougher and heavier, and he felt the change in his body at the root of his leg. He immediately stiffened his body. Xiao, don't. In his voice, he heard fear. Jing Xiao lifted his head to look at him and saw that his original blushing countenance had become pale. He could not help but sigh and roll over to lay on his side on the bed. Muhan Jang pursed his lips. As a wife, refusing to be intimate with one's husband was not right. Mm, let me say that again. As a wife, refusing to be intimate with one's husband was not right. However, his experience of that night was too terrible. Even if he knew it was wrong... He did not speak again, and just tightly grasped the corner of the quilt. When a servant girl saw what time it was, she extinguished the lights outside, and the inside of the room suddenly darkened. The servant girl on night duty went in with the light steps and light went in with light steps and light hands to gently put down the curtain, and then quickly retreated outside. Jing Xiao himself relaxed in a little while. Then, when he felt the heat near his body retreat, he reached out with his hand to pull the stiff body into the blankets. I'm sorry. Jing Xiao heard... I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Jing Xiao heard the person next to him quietly say. In the darkness, his lips hooked up and he gathered the other into an embrace, saying, Sleep. It's nothing. So, that's it for this episode. Ooh, I'm glad I got through it. And it's exactly 10 o'clock. That's really nice. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to continue to see Muhan Jang's... Um, reluctance, fear, trauma from that night continue to resurface for a little while um but it does get better and Jing Xiao does help to heal and Jing Xiao himself um let's just say he knows he did wrong and he's going to take very hilarious steps to improve it okay let's say that um but yeah so I hope you enjoyed clearly as you can see uh, things will get a little spicier, but it will be in a slightly f more flowery language, which I'm good with. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me for this evening, and I will see you again next Tuesday with the continuation of Married Thrice to Salted Fish, the next four chapters, and then Wednesday we'll be, we will be back here again for chapters 13 through whatever it is for the uh, next four chapters of The Wife is First. All right, once again, thank you so much for joining me. I think I hope you have a wonderful evening, and uh, yeah, thanks so much. Have a good night. Let's end it with, let's go back to my intro, because I love this intro. Good night.